this is going to be a quick talk on medical compliance for artificial intelligence. And I'm just going to fly through an overview of some of the research that we've been looking at over the past year. So this is me, my name is Jane Orm, and I'm a software engineer and analyst at Bluefruit Software. We are 75 people based down in Cornwall and we are embedded software specialists. During the last year, we've had a research project which we've called ACE, which stands for Audio Categorization Equipment and it's an embedded software which records audio and categorizes it. So at the start of our project, we decided to identify some of the challenges for, of AI for regulation and decided to focus on these ones. Some of the main challenges are about examining how the AI model is reaching its conclusions and not just relying on the test set results. And this is because for regulatory software, you don't really want any mysteries, especially if it's medical related. You want to know how the model is making its decision. And the dynamic nature of machine learning is another challenge as well, because the model is regularly adapting to different changes as, as you train and retrain. So why do we want to know the internal workings of an AI model? And the real reason why we want to do this is to identify problems early. And so we can review the model in a similar way that we might do a code review. The opacity of black box algorithms is about looking at the model itself and trying to work out how it is making the decisions. So some of the ways we can do this is with deconvolutes, which look at the different filters which are activated when it's doing its categorization. And also a Greg cam, which is similar. This is a heat map of an image and we'll cover a bit more about this later. The dynamic nature of machine learning We've got this here because we realized that there were some parallels with Agile in that both of them need to cope with regular changes. So as a company, we're already very experienced with TIR45, which is the Agile for medical device software standard. And I'll go into a bit more detail about this later, but there are some different techniques that we can use. What you're looking at here is the image called a spectrogram. So a spectrogram is a picture of an audio file. So the X axis is time and the Y axis is frequency. And the brighter the color, the louder the volume at that different frequency. So the image on the left is a sneeze, which is a five second audio clip. The sneeze happens towards the start of the sample. And you can see from the heat map generated next to it, a second along from the left at the bottom, that most of the focus of the model was looking at the silence that happens after the sneeze. So the bit at the start is black, meaning the model was not paying much attention to it. And of course, if you're trying to categorize the sneeze, what you really want to find is the pattern of the sneeze itself and not the silence afterwards. So to kind of resolve this, we added a silence category and then retrain the model. And you can see from the images on the right that the heat map has now moved towards the start of the clip and it's focusing on the actual sneeze sound, which is what we want. TIR45 mentions the different software development activities that take place, but the thing about TIR45 is that it emphasizes that these activities are quite flexible and they don't have to be done in a linear manner so you can do them in sort of out of order. You take the design inputs and the design outputs. Inputs are things like your software requirements or your designs and your outputs might be your source code, your binaries, your test results, that sort of thing. And you can iterate these. The key thing is that if your design inputs and outputs are controlled using a tool such as Git, then they can be finalized and approved later, which is often very controversial if you're used to working in a more waterfall way, such as normal for medical devices. So the image on the right is from TIR45, and it shows that these inputs and outputs iterate based on the different learnings. So you'll do your input, generate your output, and then you will think about how you can improve your inputs and so on. What this does, is it gives you the freedom to experiment. So you can try different design alternatives. You can res respond to feedback, perhaps from your stakeholders or your users. And then you can generate your results. And there are different tools that you can use to help you. For example, Git can enable you to store and control the inputs and outputs alongside the code. And we can use living documentation to automatically generate your documentation. Test automation enables you to automate your requirements. And this is called executable specifications. And this generates your test results. And because you've stored all of those inputs alongside your code, it means that they match the implementation and they retain their traceability and you can generate them whenever you like. 
This enables you to iterate faster while being in control, which improves the quality and means you can have shorter release cycles. Thank you and feel free to contact us if you would like some more information.